Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here, and this video is brought to you by the online B-Ball Breakdown membership. Click the first link in the description below to learn more and join. Coming off an emotional high of a Game 7 on Sunday, it was natural for the Portland Trailblazers to suffer a letdown on the road in Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals against the defending champs. But no one was ready for how the Blazers curiously defended the most lethal part of Golden State's attack. And no one was happier to demonstrate how bad that decision was than Warriors guard Stephen Curry. If you're not on Twitter, you might not be aware of the outrage over Terry Stotts' decision to use drop coverage against ball screens for Steph Curry. Let me explain why it didn't work. Normally, you'll see this positioning by the big man if the ball handler's man is forcing the ball away from the screen, enabling that defender to stay relatively attached to the ball. But when you chase like this, and it takes you four steps to get around the screen, just look at all the room Curry has. On this play, there's a notion that Dame wants to force Curry away from the screen, but Looney instantly flips it, Cantor is 13 feet away from the action, and this is like practice for Curry. There were six possessions like this where Curry got looks from behind the arc, and he hit three of them. On the opening play of the game, he missed it, so either Stotts wanted to play with fire or was hoping the odds wouldn't catch up to him. Uh, is this sustainable for you guys to keep dropping the big so far off? Did they, uh, I can't remember, Did, when he had 33 in the second half, were they trapping then? Yes. They were? And he scored 33 in the second half? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll look at that. I get it. Stotts was upset after a loss and was being questioned about his game plan. But why does he present the argument as if dropping or doubling are the only two choices? Let's look at how the Rockets defended Curry in a series that saw him shoot a frigid 27.9% from three. Even though Gordon gets hung up with the screen, it's Capella who's standing on the three-point line, challenging in the air to influence the miss. Here's Nene two steps above the three-point line to thwart a jump shot, and it gives time for Harden to jump back and swipe at the ball, leading to a terrible miss by Curry. It was even a problem on the bread-and-butter low post split the Warriors run. With Looney feeding the post, it's his job to screen for Curry, but with Cantor dropped to the block and Hood completely hung up on the screen, this is more shooting practice. The Rockets had much better success defending this because they switched so many screens. As Curry comes around the elbow screen by Iguodala, watch P.J. Tucker jump switch this so he's right on top of Curry on the catch. Now the shot clock is an extra defender and Steph can't create a good shot. Capella switches the same action on this play with both feet above the three-point line and he literally brings Curry to his knees before harassing him into an end of shot clock forced up deep shot that has very little chance of success. The Warriors defense wasn't immune to criticism either and it was almost as curious as dropping against Curry. They seemed so worried about a canter post up against Looney that they immediately doubled. Now this is the right way to double from the weak side and on an angle it's hard for Cantor to see. But it requires everyone to be on the same page and rotate down. Draymond is too focused on CJ and Cantor has the easy pass to Harkless for the layup. This time Draymond was better at rotating down and leaving his man open at the three point line. The Warriors are more than happy to give up this shot but Harkless knocks it down. This time, they rotate with McKinney, who is in the lowest spot on the weak side. Clay is supposed to sink and fill to the cutter from the corner, but he inexplicably stops three feet short, and it gives Aminu an easy dunk. Well, can we call that a dunk or whatever that was? Even when it was Hood trying to back down Livingston, it didn't look like he needed any help, but Jarebko runs at him, and Cook is supposed to rotate to Turner and keep Bell down by the block as the rim protector. Instead, they got this backwards and give up an easy dunk. The solution to the Cantor post up was to get Draymond on him so they didn't need to double and this worked wonders for the defense in the third quarter. And if you're wondering why they never went back to Cantor much in the post, here's Bogut just knocking the ball away into another of the dreaded low post turnovers that teams simply cannot afford, particularly because of what happens on the other end. Curry and Clay were the only two players that really hurt the Blazers last night and to be honest, it was the Warriors' swarming defense that ended up being the deciding factor, even though only five of the Blazers' turnovers ended up directly leading to scores. 
I have to imagine attacking Curry was a priority for Portland, and the Warriors put him on CJ because they didn't want him dealing with Lillard. But on this possession, Curry starts out on Lillard, but he gives it up immediately, doesn't get it back, and with Clay completely denying CJ the ball and Draymond intentionally ignoring Harkless, the Blazers have no choice but to go to him and we all have to endure watching this shot get packed. It's not like they need to force Curry onto Dame, considering they have the next best thing in CJ McCollum. And here they target him with an ISO on the right wing. The floor isn't balanced well, all four defenders are within a step of being able to help, and credit Curry for the great defense. What I think they need to do is give Lillard more chances to attack Curry like in this possession, where they scream with Curry's man, get the switch, and Dame just attacks into a step back 14 footer that drops clean through the net. Which leads me to the last adjustment Terry Stotts must make for game two. While Cantor generated a few hoops, we've seen how much he hurt them on the defensive end, and this means they must start Zach Collins. First off, he sets really tough screens that help negate the denying defense the Warriors are playing on Dame and CJ. And he's willing to mix it up physically to help create the openings that eventually lead to a wide open Curry shot fake sidestep three pointer from the right corner. Even more importantly, I think Portland needs to start with its best lineup out of the gate. Lillard, McCollum, Hood, Collins, and Harkless. A group Stotts was only willing to play three minutes in game one and will no doubt play more once he goes through the tape. With this five, you've got a good mix of playmakers and shooting. When Golden State doubles Lillard, Collins is good at the short roll, and while he doesn't quite make it, it's one of the best shots you can get in the half court. Another good pin down by Collins gets CJ open, and the defense is so concerned they run to double the perimeter, leaving Collins a free run to the hoop. CJ needs to make a better pass and they get a layup out of this. The only bucket the Warriors got against this lineup during the stretch was a crazy difficult left foot pivot quick release Curry 3 with two guys around him. Stotts was way too quick with the trigger and we have to wait to the third quarter to see this 5 again. When Harkless helps one pass away to thwart the Curry curl around Looney, this looked like a surefire 2 points until Collins reads this perfectly and gets a hand up in time and the ball floats out of bounds. They attack Curry with a pick and roll and CJ reminds us all how devastating he is from the mid-range. The Warriors run flex for Clay, where he has a choice of using the cross screen by Curry or the pin down from Looney. CJ gets around quick and is able to distract Clay enough to induce the miss. Another double of Dame off the pick and roll leaves Collins in space to make a great decision. He actually had Hood wide open in the corner too, but opts for Harkless cutting and they get the dunk. There's a little luck involved as Draymond rolls to the hoop open but fumbles the catch, but Collins had gotten there anyway, and once Harkless hustles back in position, he blocks it out of Draymond's hand. While CJ makes a mistake to attack one-on-one -on -one versus Clay here, the ball does find its way to a wide open Rodney Hood at the right break, a shot Stotts cannot complain about even if it doesn't go in. Unfortunately, this was another example of the Trailblazers' ill-advised drop system against Curry, and he makes this one look easy. And the last possession with this lineup sees more great screening by Collins to free up Lillard, and when they double, he finds the open space, goes to the hole hard, and draws the foul. It's not very likely Portland wins more than a game in this series, but if they can clean up some of their lineups and work on switching on defense, they'll be in an infinitely better position to compete. But that just means the Warriors bring Kevin Durant back to put on the Infinity Gauntlet and snap his fingers. Sports fans, Coach Nick again, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then I've got a new online basketball membership where I share with you the best of what NBA teams are doing to help you be more successful on the court. Click the first link in the description or the pinned comment below to learn more. And don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know how you feel about today's video. Check your settings to make sure you get notified each time we drop a new one. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in?